This is a different angle, Dragon at the center of your screen, and parts of the International Space Station, its destination, uh, is at the bottom right-hand side of your screen. Yeah, that's right. This is a view from the camera on the port trust segment of the station. You can see that Japanese robotic arm. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop. Approach one and soft capture ring extension will begin shortly. Dragon will continue its approach to waypoint two. The big loop and verbs copy. We'll continue to waypoint two and expecting soft capture ring extension once we transition to approach. Good copy. All right, so we just heard that they will proceed past waypoint, waypoint one onto waypoint two, waypoint one being 220 meters in front of the station, again, in line with the docking axis. When it starts to move in, it'll pass the keep out sphere, which is that imaginary line that extends 180 meters directly in front of the station. When that happens, there's a new set of flight rules that come into play when Dragon makes its way into the keep out sphere. Mark Vandehei, who's monitoring from the station side, if he sees any issues on his end, he would have the ability to command an abort from the station side. But of course, an abort can be issued in, from inside Dragon or from the ground. Yeah, the journey from waypoint zero to waypoint one, which the Dragon vehicle just passed, took about 20 minutes. From waypoint one to waypoint two, it's gonna take about 14 minutes. Um, again, uh, Courtney, we are hearing great news. Um, you had mentioned that Dragon has enough power to really uh, stay on orbit for about 20 hours, but um, you know, we are not needing any of these hold positions at either of the waypoints so far. And so we're just kind of cruising on through and Dragon continues to make a, a great nominal approach towards the International Space Station. V2 link can reconfiguration complete. And we're hearing that the soft capture ring deploy is in progress. A view now of Mission Control Hawthorne. And as we continue to make our approach from waypoint one to waypoint two and uh, make our final approach, a couple of things uh, also need to happen. The visors um, on all the spacesuits will come down and then um, really uh, the, the uh, the Dragon vehicle will, will sort of take over from there. Uh, it's been doing most of the bulk work in terms of navigation, but uh, there's a period known as CHOP, uh, crew hands off point, where uh, if we needed to back off or attempt redocking at some other phase or abort, the, the vehicle has to make that decision and, and, and make that call. We'll be getting our views back of Dragon and the International Space Station, but we're in a short handover period right now between satellites. So until then, we'll still get views of our um, control rooms here in Hawthorne as well as in Houston. Yeah, we are expecting uh, docking to happen at 3.32 p.m. Pacific time. So uh, just uh, about 20 minutes from now, uh, it's been uh, 
about a 21 hour journey. The, the crew has been in, in space for a little over 21 hours since their liftoff yesterday. So um, I'm sure they are very excited to be just 20 uh, minutes away from docking. There are a couple of procedures that need to happen after docking to get the hatch open and for the crews to, uh, the crews at the uh, International Space Station and the crew inside Dragon right now to uh, say hi and meet each other. But, uh, you know, so far uh, things have gone really smoothly and, um, uh, even even at the beginning of this broadcast, we knew that we were going to be slightly ahead of the, the uh, anticipated timeline. While they did go through Waypoint 1, they will stop at Waypoint 2, 20 meters away from the International Space Station, before they could get that um, final go, no-go to go in for their final approach and docking to the International Space Station. So again, um, we are going from waypoint one to waypoint two. There is a, a the, the keep out sphere on screen right now. This is an imaginary sphere. It's uh, 200 meters in, in radius. And, and uh, what the sphere means is uh, if Dragon were to somehow lose control of its thrusters, it would be at least um, four orbits or six hours until it, it, it goes inside the keep out sphere. And so we do checks along the way, uh, not just at the keep out sphere, but a, there's a larger approach ellipsoid uh, that measures four kilometers by two by two um, that also needed a pull to make sure that things were safe for approach. Endurance on the Dragon to ground, uh, we believe you called. And to disregard, Tom, uh, jump the gun a little bit on the soft capture ring extension. We disregard. So again, the soft capture ring extension is underway. We are expecting to hear the call out that it is um, uh, basically fully deployed. Um, this is what will first make contact with the International Space Station here in uh, about 17 minutes. And Dragon is actually now inside of the keep-out sphere. They're about 120 meters away from the International Space Station. That next milestone coming at waypoint two, about 20 meters away from the space station. Dragon is going to soon be crossing that 100 meter threshold from the International Space Station. We started off uh, with just a blurry dot of Dragon a few hours ago, and now uh, we're getting some really. On the big loop. Soft capture ring extension complete. Copy, it's on the big loop. We'll see you soon. Okay, so that soft capture ring extension is complete. As you were saying, we can really start to make out some of the features on Dragon. Yes, um, if you look very closely underneath the nose cone, right on the, the front of Dragon, there are four um, holes. Uh, those are 
uh, where the four forward bulkhead Draco engines are mounted. And um, if you look between those holes, there's another there's another dot. Those are the umbilicals that we were mentioning earlier. That is what will plug into the International Space Station. At this point, Dragon is pretty much locked on to the uh, docking target of the International Space Station with LIDAR and some of its other sensors. Um, so again, it knows where it's at in space, it knows where the International Space Station is at, and the crew inside, we saw them uh, navigating through their screens and getting um, some great information, uh, but they really can just sit back and relax. The Dragon is really navigating um, uh, pretty much everything at this point uh, and can really dock by itself. Station at Houston on the big loop. You can monitor approach per step one of 1.104, crew dragon approach and retreat monitoring. Let us know when your review is complete and you're ready for docking. Review is complete, ready for docking. Copy all, thanks. Thanks, endurance. Just for your information, we saw an object look like a knurled knob, although difficult to tell with distance in our centerline camera view from upper left to lower right from our view. Uh, it is not visible anymore. And copy that, Tom. You saw a gnarled knob in your centerline view going from the upper left to the lower right. Is that a good read back? A good read back. It could have been a small nut. Um, it's hard to tell the distance uh, from the camera. Just want to let you know we saw that pass by. And SpaceX copies all. We are uh, not concerned with continuing our approach here, and I will give you some calls up on the uh, big loop shortly. Endurance copies. SpaceX, endurance on the big loop. Crew visors are down, and it looks like a good alignment. You've got our stamp of approval to continue. And Dragon SpaceX on the big loop, we are anticipating that we are going to enter a hold here at waypoint two for some more favorable lighting conditions. Right now we're expecting approximately 10 to 12 minutes for that hold and we'll keep you posted as we watch those lighting conditions improve for this uh, final sunset before docking. Endurance copies on the big loop. Uh, we can go visors back up then if that's the plan. Uh, otherwise, we're happy with lighting. You guys obviously have a, a better SA of what it's going to look like in a few minutes. So we'll go visors up until you tell us you're ready to continue. And we concur with that. You do not need to have your visors down until we have entered the approach to prep when we are leaving waypoint two. So Dragon should be uh, reaching waypoint two here in a few minutes. Uh, that means it's at 20 meters away from the International Space Station. We did hear from the Corps that they are going to pause here for um, 
10 to 12 minutes uh, for more favorable lighting conditions. So this is necessary for docking. So uh, with the orbital sunrises and sunsets, uh, if we wait a few minutes, we're gonna have uh, better lighting for the sensors and cameras on Dragon. So uh, the crews have opted to uh, put their visors up for the time being and wait uh, for that final approach call before they have to uh, close their visors once again. All right, and we have confirmation that Dragon has arrived. On the big loop for approach. Red burn turns on the big loop. And stand by one, Dragon. As I was saying, we have confirmation that Dragon has arrived at waypoint two, 20 meters away from the International Space Station. They'll hold here and conduct a final go no go poll before final approach. You can see on screen that Dragon is pretty much parked uh, right outside the front door of the International Space Station. Again, we are waiting for more favorable lighting conditions for that final approach. This is a great view here of Dragon and uh, looking uh, of, at what's underneath the nose cone. Um, if you look closely, there is a... And Dragon SpaceX on Dragon to ground, no response required. We're just uh, talking here on the ground about the FOD that you called down about before we give our, our go for the approach. Okay, again, that was the core checking in on the uh, FOD or foreign object debris that the crew had called out during their approach. They had noticed a um, knurled uh, knob. Um, so again, just make sure everything is clear before final approach. Uh, but again, uh, well, on screen right now is a view of Dragon. Uh, there is a gray ring with three petals on it. That is the soft capture ring that has been deployed. Um, 
This will make initial contact with the International Space Station, attach itself to the International Space Station, and in on the big loop. Brown has told go to resume the approach. Please confirm that your readiness for the final approach and that your visors are down. If so, ground will be commanding resume shortly. As a reminder, once Dragon is inside the crew hands-off point, retreat and breakout are not permitted. And one final item of note is that we do anticipate that we may have some less than favorable lighting conditions until approximately three meters away from the docking adapter. How copy. And Durance copies all. We've got the crew advisors down. We're expecting uh, lighting conditions may not be perfect and build out three meters, but uh, honestly, we're happy with what we can see currently, and we'll avoid actions inside the shop. And SpaceX copies. We will be commanding resume imminently. So it does look like we are going to resume uh, approach for uh, final docking. The cruise visors are uh, now uh, closed. And it does look like at about three meters, they are going to get uh, a bit more favorable lighting conditions, which is great news. And CHOP, as you heard, that crew hands-off point, meaning if there were an abort scenario, it would need to be done autonomously by Dragon. Yeah, as I was mentioning earlier, those that, that soft capture ring makes initial contact. Uh, once it does make initial contact, uh, it effectively pulls the Dragon into place for the hard capture hooks to uh, drive into place. There are 12 of them in total, and they are actually faceted around uh, the uh, in, a, in a, a circle a little bit wider than the um, soft capture rings that we just saw on screen, but those 12 hooks will uh, effectively keep Dragon in place. Station. Hey, from Station Houston on the big loop, you can commence monitoring steps two and three in one decimal one zero four. Thanks. So it does look like we're in an orbital nighttime now. Uh, you can see the firing of the Draco engines. Uh, this is, again, uh, there are 16 of them uh, on the Dragon, and they will continue to fire um, for any type of micro adjustments that are necessary. Um, there are green and red uh, navigation lights uh, on the outside of Dragon as well. Uh, then also that centerline camera in the middle. Again, all of these sensors help for Dragon to autonomously dock with the International Space Station. Dragon now just under 14 meters from the International Space Station. Making that slow and methodical approach to the International Docking Adapter. Copy 10. Now just under eight meters from the International Space Station. This is the. This is what Dragon is seeing. Uh, what you're seeing on screen is the International Space Station and the forward uh, Node 2 port. You can see there are a bunch of lines uh, around that frontmost ring. That is where the hard capture uh, hooks will drive into place. 
and right in the center of that is the docking target. Copy five. The docking target is what uh, Dragon is using to, again, uh, help navigate it towards the International Space Station. We just heard the call out that we are five meters away. Soft capture confirmed. For the big ones, we see the same. Soft capture, 10 to 18 targets. And contact. And contact confirmed at 3.32 Pacific time as the International Space Station and Endurance were flying 263 statute miles over the Eastern Caribbean. Now, we still have a few steps to complete before Dragon is securely attached to the station, uh, space station. In progress. And we're hearing call outs of soft capture ring retra retraction. That should complete in about four minutes. And then about two minutes after that, the hard capture sequence will start. This is where the 12 hooks around the outer ring will drive themselves into place and a really secure dragon to the International Space Station. Uh, and then hard docking should be complete in about 10 minutes from now. That's right, those 12 hooks will drive six at a time in two parts to form that hard mate between Dragon and the International Space Station. So what's happening right now with the soft capture ring retraction is uh, those pedals as part of the soft capture ring, um, they were extended and again, that's what uh, made contact with the International Space Station. They're effectively being pulled back into the Dragon and because it's attached, the Dragon is now getting closer and closer with the International Space Station. Again, so those 12 hard capture hooks can set themselves in place and then we have a nice uh, docking uh, procedure uh, completed. It does look like we're over a handover period. We can't uh, get uh, bring you guys the views, uh, the amazing views of Dragon and the International Space Station at this time, but uh, trust me, we're gonna get them back uh, very soon. Uh, for now, this is a view of Mission Control and Hawthorne. Um, uh, we're working in tandem with uh, Johnson Space Center uh, in Houston to make sure that, again, these sequences were bringing uh, the crew safely to the International Space Station. That's right. And again, if you're just joining us, contact was confirmed at 3.32 p.m. Pacific time as the International Space Station and Endurance were flying 263 statute miles above the Eastern Caribbean. Uh, once hard capture is completed, uh, Dragon is firmly affixed to the International Space Station, but um, not quite able to exit the Dragon quite yet. There are still a couple of things that need to happen. Uh, the space between where Dragon's hatch is and the International Space Station hatch is known as the vestibule. vestibule. It is unpressurized right now, so we gotta make sure that uh, we uh, put air into it, pressurize it, that way it's safe for uh, both the folks inside Dragon and the folks on the International Space Station. And there are a couple of procedural things that need to happen before uh, we can open up the hatches on both the Dragon and the International Space Station side. That's right. So right now we have what's called a soft capture. Again, we won't have hard capture until those 12 hooks are fully driven in those two parts. Six will drive at a time. I'm sure that the crew is um, super eager to get out of Dragon and, and uh, uh, enjoy the International Space Station and start their work. Uh, they've been in, in space for about 
21 and a half hours. So uh, they separated from Falcon 9 uh, yesterday night, uh, but have been in orbit and uh, going through a number of phasing burns uh, to make sure that they can rendezvous uh, safely with the International Space Station. Um, the, the, the folks in the International Space Station themselves. Docking sequence is holding for MCS reconfiguration. So uh, uh, the International Space Station crew uh, has also been helping on their end as well, um, monitoring Dragon's approach and making sure they are doing any type of prep work necessary, again, to get that A-pass hatch open and welcome the new members uh, to the International Space Station. So now that the ring retraction is complete, they will begin driving those hooks. Again, those are 12 hooks that will drive in two parts, six at a time, to form that hard mate between Dragon and the International Space Station. Yeah, Dragons will also be powered by umbilicals uh, via the International Space Station. So um, as part of that hard capture sequence, uh, we'll also be plugging in umbilicals to the Dragon to make sure it has power again from the International Space Station. Station 9 Endurance, Houston on the big loop. MCS is configured and we're proceeding with hook driving. Station copies. Okay, so proceeding with hook driving now. Again, 12 hooks, six will drive, and then the second six will drive, and we will officially have a hard mate between Endurance and the International Space Station. Yeah, this procedure takes about four minutes, uh, and so um, it's underway right now. We just heard the call, which is super exciting. Um, and then from there, uh, we'll have to um, move on to pressurization of the vestibule and then opening of the hatches and then we'll get a welcome ceremony. And so uh, I'm sure there'll be uh, lots of smiles and hugs as the, uh, the crew uh, enters the International Space Station and three of them for the first time. Um, so uh, we have three folks that, again, um, have, been, uh, have flown for the first time today and this is their first time in space. And of course, they still have those suits on right now, but they'll be able to take those off before they float through the hatch to say hello to their crew members and get welcomed aboard their home for the next six months. Yeah, it's been super smooth. Um, uh, we really uh, have beat the timeline in, in a sense. Um, the crew woke up a little early and uh, we didn't really have any holds at uh, almost any of the waypoints. And so we went from, um, you know, the approach initiation burn to uh, waypoint zero, from waypoint zero straight to waypoint one, from waypoint one straight to waypoint two. Had a small hold at waypoint two to make sure that we had favorable lighting conditions for that soft capture. But uh, all in all, it's been a really great and uh, really smooth operations uh, as part of this mission. Again, we're standing by as that hard capture sequence is underway. The first set of those hooks are driving right now. Again, that's six of the 12 hooks. Yeah, part of the reason why the docking sequence is uh, split up into two phases is with the the design of the soft capture ring um, those pedals really uh, allow you a little bit of more margin when you're when you're docking and so um, it allows the the the, the spacecraft basically just to get close and then um, we have some mechanical features that will really allow it to get that hard mate that we're looking for. Um, again, uh, we are expecting that to be complete in just a few minutes here. So uh, we'll be listening on the uh, big loop um, with everyone else here on that exciting news. Okay, the first set of six hooks have driven. That second set will start now. Once those 12 have all driven, we will have a hard mate. 
So again, those, those first set of six have driven. And this is a great view. This is a live view inside the Dragon that is, uh, has been soft captured and about halfway through um, its hard capture sequences. Uh, on the left-hand side of your screen is Rajachari. He is the uh, commander. And um, on, to his right is Thomas Marsh, Marshburn, uh, who is uh, the pilot of this mission. Not on screen, um, we didn't get too many views of them, but to Rajachar's left, I believe, is Kayla, Kayla Barron, who is the mission specialist, and the other mission specialist um, is uh, Matthias Maurer. And so um, everyone but Thomas Marshburn, again, this is their first uh, space flight, um, the first time at the International Space Station, the, their first time riding the Dragon. Um, so it's all super exciting and um, we got some video footage of them earlier. Uh, they were um, playing a game uh, of, of who could spin the most without hitting anything. And Durance on the big loop copy is hard capture complete. Crew visors are up and we see soft capture still in progress. SpaceX copies. All right, and we have confirmation that that hard capture is complete. Crew Dragon Endurance officially made it to the International Space Station. So now that Dragon has completed the docking sequence, the spacecraft must undergo a handful of checks before we are able to open the hatch. The crew on board Dragon will now get a chance to get out of their suits before moving on to hatch operations. Yeah, that's right, and things will be picking up inside the station too as um, NASA's Mark Vandehei gets the hatch on the station side, ready to be opened and starts pressurizing that area known as the vestibule between the Dragon and station hatches. So for now, let's go to Sandra Jones for a refresher on what's ahead now that Dragon is officially docked. Thanks, Courtney. It's a very exciting moment for all of us here in Mission Control following Dragon's docking at 5.32 p.m. Central Time while the space station was flying 260 statute miles over the Eastern Caribbean. NASA Flight Director Rebecca Wingfield led the team here in Mission Control Houston for Dragon's approach and docking today. And to their right is Capcom Joshua Kutrick, who will be co communicating with the crew aboard station to step through procedures in preparation for hatch. Right now, there are three astronauts and cosmonauts aboard the space station. That includes NASA's Mark Vandehei, as well as Roscosmos cosmonauts Pyotr Dubrov and Anton Shkaplerov, who is the current space station commander. Now that Endurance is docked to the space station, Mark Vandehei will secure some hardware and will move right into hatch operations. First, he'll open the large hatch at node 2 forward, giving him access inside the pressurized mating adapter. Then he'll pressurize the vestibule, which is a small space between the hatches on Dragon and the space station. Because this was exposed to the vacuum of space prior to docking, he'll need to fill it with air to make sure the pressure is nearly equal to that of the International Space Station and the Dragon. He'll use a small valve on the station to introduce air into the vestibule. SpaceX on the big loop. Docking sequence is complete. Welcome to the International Space Station. Endurance copies and docking complete, and happy to be here at the ISS. Ground will be enabling hardline power and comm connections shortly. You have a go to doff your suits per procedure 4.012. We will take the cameras external shortly. Okay, we've got a go to start suit doffing per 4.012, and you're taking the cameras external.
Good read back. And you could see that excitement by the crew inside Endurance as they are officially welcomed to their home in space for the next six months. Shortly, they will doff or take off their spacesuits in preparation for hatch open. However, before we get to that point, there are a few steps that need to be worked through both on the International Space Station side as well as on the Endurance vehicle side. Inside Space Station, on dragging the ground, the cameras are external. And Dragon, SpaceX on the big loop, the cameras are external. Endurance copy, cameras external. Dragon on Dragon the ground on the cabin mic. How do you hear? And Dragon, we have you good for the cabin mic comm check. And do you want to leave the uh, cabin audio set to listen to both SpaceX and Big Loop? And that is affirmative. Leave them both in that configuration. And station, it's Houston on the big loop for Mark. Uh, we're ready. You're go. Go for the ingress procedure part one. That's going to be your steps one and two and two decimal 102 dragon arrival. All right, picking up in step 1.2. Thanks. Hey, affirmative. And those words between NASA astronaut Mark Vandehei on board the International Space Station and Capcom Josh Uakutrik. Vandehei is going to use a small valve on the station to introduce air into the vestibule, and teams on the ground and mission control will monitor the pressure and temperature to make sure everything is leak-free before we get ready to open up the hatches. We expect it to take about two hours to get everything pressurized and check out before we open up the hatches. Vandehei has also already deployed umbilicals to connect power and data between the spacecraft in anticipation for hatch open. That view that you see on the center of your screen here in Mission Control Houston is on the International Space Station side. In a short time, we'll see that hatch open up and we'll see the crew of Crew 3 float through. However, there are some procedures that need to be stepped through before we get to that point.
and if you're just joining us, the Crew-3 astronauts have successfully docked to the International Space Station after launching at 8.03 p.m. Central Time yesterday from Launch Pad 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The crew of Rajachari, Kayla Barron, Tom Marshburn, and European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Maurer docked to the orbital outpost today at 5.32 p.m. Central Time. We're tracking a hatch opening to begin shortly after 7 p.m. Central Time with a welcoming ceremony approximately 35 minutes after. This view now of NASA astronaut Mark Vandehei as he begins to work through those procedures ahead of hatch opening. And we did just see NASA astronaut Mark Vandehei open the Node 2 forward hatch. Houston Station on 2 and step 1.4, the Node 2 forward hatch is open. We copy node two forward hatch open and mark your go to continue. Go to continue with step two and your go at two bot two is uh, good. Fantastic, thanks. And Endurance, SpaceX on the big loop, you can monitor the steps on the ISS side in section four of 4.400. You cut out halfway through the transmission. You want to survive or something? And repeating my call, but uh, for if desired, you can monitor some of the vestibule pressurization actions that uh, Mark is performing on the other side of the hatch in section four of 4.400. Happy, we'll follow along at 4.400, section four. And on the right-hand side of your screen is a view of Mission Control in Hawthorne, where flight controllers will look after the Endurance Dragon and its system. Dragon will be configured for a long-duration stay aboard the space station now that it has successfully docked, eventually being configured for a quiescent mode, and will remain there for six months.
Use the station on two and step two decimal four. The time is 11.58. Houston copies one one colon five eight. Thanks, we'll call you when the leak check's complete. Vanda High has successfully opened up the large hatch at node two forward, giving him access inside the pressurized mating adapter, which you see on the right-hand side of your screen there. He's working to pressurize the vestibule, which is the small space between the hatches on Dragon and the space station. Because this was exposed to the vacuum of space prior to docking, he'll need to fill it with air to make sure the pressure is nearly equal to that of the International Space Station and the Dragon. He's using a small valve on the station to introduce air into the vestibule and teams on the ground in mission control will monitor the pressure and temperature just to make sure everything is leak free before we get ready to open up the hatches. We'll likely hear some of those calls from the ground to the space station as vestibule repress continues. Four seat suits connected to the umbilicals and an hour timer started for drying. We're still working on uh, cleaning them up and changing them. And copy that. I have started a one hour timer myself. One request while we are in this configuration for Tom in seat three. Uh, Tom, if you're able to inspect your umbilical, the side that mates to your suit, as well as the suit umbilical QD and just see if there's anything uh, off nominal from the pins or the O-rings. Just trying to do a little more troubleshooting from the wind noise earlier uh, during the approach phase. Copy on dragging around. We'll take a look at the both sides. Of the Copy. Thanks, Roger. Vanda High has completed thermal equalization on the vestibule between Dragon and Station, and the vestibule pressure was brought up to five pounds per square inch, where a leak check is currently being performed.
We've been pretty lucky with our external camera views so far. This view is from the Japanese exposed facility pointing at the forward end of the International Space Station where Dragon is currently docked with the Crew-3 astronauts on board. SpaceX Endurance on the Dragon and Ground. Uh, we've inspected uh, both the embedded side and the suit side, and also the other ports as well. Every O-ring is intact. There are no uh, cuts. There's no FOD and the electrical pins as well. We don't see any damage to those. Um, and so to describe a little bit better what I at the time was that when I leaned forward when we were having the wind problem, I felt the wind the sound cut out. So I pressed down on the umbilical mate on my right thigh and that went away. I did not feel a click or any change, however, but it did go away at that moment. Okay, copy Tom. So uh, you inspected all the umbilicals pins and O-rings and identified nothing off nominal. And from the event itself, when it did occur, when you leaned forward to uh, press your umbilical to your suit QD, that's when the noise went away. And then when you got back, it did not, uh, the noise was confirmed to go away. Is that a good read back? Uh, yes, I leaned forward. It cut out for just a second, uh, which clued me into the potential area of the problem. And then when I pressed on it, it went away, and uh, no one else could hear either, hear the wind either. Okay, copy, Tom. Thank you for that. Uh, that is all the troubleshooting that we have you doing from right now. I will let you know if we have any other thoughts. We copy. Thanks. And Dragon, for awareness, since the suits are dry, you do have a go for steps, sorry, sections one through three of 4.400. I do have a request that while performing that inventory in section three, provide uh, as many details about the remaining water bottles and meals in each bag at your discretion, but just want to make sure I have a, a really good count of that before uh, we have you guys hop out on station. And we copy, uh, go for one through three of 4.400, and we'll give you a detailed inventory in step three. And thank you, Endurance. And with that call, we may be getting some views back inside the Crew Dragon Endurance as the crew has removed their spacesuits following docking and has them in a drying configuration as they await to come aboard the space station. Still tracking hatch opening about an hour from now with a welcoming ceremony approximately 35 minutes after hatch opening.
We just had a great shot of NASA astronaut Mark Vandehei as he continues to step through procedures ahead of hatch opening. Directly in the center of your screen, below some of those cargo bags, is the hatch that we will eventually see the Crew-3 astronauts float through as they come aboard their home aboard the International Space Station, their home for the next six months. Work continues to pressurize the vestibule, which is the small space between the hatches on the Dragon and Space Station. Because this was exposed to the vacuum of space prior to docking, the crew needs to fill it with air and make sure its pressure is nearly equal with the atmospheric pressure on Dragon and the Space Station. Vanda High is using a small valve on the station's hatch to slowly introduce air into the station's vestibule. And on the ground, flight controllers here in Houston are monitoring and verifying the pressure readings to make sure everything is leak-free before we get ready to open up the hatches. Following vestibule pressurization, leak checks will be performed, and if all checks out smoothly, Vandehei will be given a go to open up the station side hatch, the A-pass hatch. Once that's open, he'll be able to see the crew inside Endurance. And there's a small window on Dragon where he'll be able to see them from. His main job then will be to configure the station side hatch, which is currently configured with a docking target, which is essentially a small rod with an X on the end that provided guidance for the Dragon during its approach to dock with station. He'll remove that target and provide some padding to allow safe entry for the Crew-3 astronauts into the International Space Station. Vanda High now working to configure some of those cargo bags.
And Endurance and Station Houston on the big loop. No reply needed, but just be advised we're configuring hardline, so we'll be down big loop audio just for a few minutes here as we get hardline in place. Work continuing in anticipation of hatch opening. It looks like NASA astronaut Mark Van de High was configuring some lights in anticipation of a welcoming ceremony that we'll have once the Crew 3 astronauts come aboard the station.
If you're just tuning in with us this afternoon, the Crew 3 astronauts have successfully docked to the space station after launching yesterday, 8.03 p.m. Central Time from Launch Pad 39A at Kennedy's Space Center in Florida. The crew of Rajachari, Kayla Barron, Tom Marshburn, and European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Maurer are docked to the orbital outpost, which happened a short time ago at 5.32 p.m. Central Time. Inside the space station, NASA astronaut Mark Vandehei is making incremental steps toward hatch opening, now slated for a little under an hour from now. As part of those procedures, he's going to install some padding around the hatch. Looks like there's some floating there that he's going to work to install shortly. Endurance and station, Houston on the big loop. We've reconfigured for hardline audio, requesting a comm check. Let's go with endurance first. How do you hear? Endurance has you loud and clear on the big loop. And Endurance, Houston, how's you loud and clear as well? Station, Good to hear you. Station, clear on the big loop. Station, we hear you loud and clear. Everyone's 555 five, five on the hardline big loop. Thanks. And SpaceX has Station and Endurance 555 five, five on the big loop.
work continues to pressurize the vestibule, which is currently at vacuum. It was exposed to the vacuum of space and needs to be repressurized before the crew aboard Endurance can float through the hatch. You can see the A-pass hatch, which is the androgynous peripheral assembly system in your screen there. It's surrounded by some cargo bags, pretty much dead center, maybe a little below on your screen there. Eventually we will see that open and the crew of Crew 3 float aboard the space station. There is also a hatch on the Dragon itself, which will be opened. And here shortly, we may be getting some video back inside the Endurance vehicle. Dragon SpaceX on Dragon to ground. Permission to come back on board with cameras when able. SpaceX Dragon, just stand by for a few more minutes, please. And no rush, Kayla. Just wanted to check in. Throughout our coverage, we'll be taking your questions live and answering them on air. If you have a question for us, use the hashtag AskNASA to submit it. We did get a question from Steve who wants to know over which area of the Earth will docking take place? Well, as you can see, Endurance is already docked to the International Space Station. That docking took place at 5.32 p.m. Central Time. While the International Space Station was flying 260 statute miles over the Eastern Caribbean Sea. And if you're wondering where the International Space Station is currently flying, it is flying off the southern tip of Australia, 269 statute miles high at a velocity of 17,500 miles per hour. That means the space station orbits the Earth every 90 minutes and sees a sunrise or a sunset every 45 minutes.
station at Houston on the big loop. We have a good leak check, and we're ready for you to pick up in Dragon Pressurization Ingress Part 2, your go at Step 3.1. Okay, that's in work. That's good words. And uh, just while I have you near an ATU, we're also getting ready for uh, Dragon Hatch Open, of course, and the PAO event. And just looking at our downlink, um, if you could zoom in just slightly, a touch of zoom on uh, the Node 2 camera, I think we'll be set. Taking a look. And words back is that that's perfect, Mark. Thank you. And with those words, we did just get confirmation that there was a good leak check. So next up, the pressure will be brought up and equalized to that of the pressure inside the space station. Additionally, we heard some words about some slight camera adjustments for an upcoming welcome ceremony that we'll have about 35 minutes after hatch opening. Endurance, you're free to come back on board. And copy that. Thanks, Kayla. We'll put that in work and let you know when we're back on board. Again, NASA astronaut Mark Vandehei has completed thermal equalization on the vestibule between Dragon and Station. Following this, the vestibule's pressure was brought up to about five pounds per square inch where a leak check was performed. Everything checked out smoothly with that leak check, so the pressure is now being brought up to equalize it between that of the pressure inside the station. Once pressure is equalized and after a couple more checks, Vanda High will be given a go to open up the station side hatch, the A-pass hatch. Once that's open, he'll be able to see the crew inside Endurance. His main job then will be to configure the station side hatch, which is currently configured with a docking target, which is just a small rod with an X on the end that provides guidance for the Dragon during its approach to dock with Space Station. He'll remove that target and provide padding to allow safe entry for the Crew-3 astronauts into the space station. We're still targeting a hatch opening shortly after 7 p.m. Central Time, as well as a welcoming ceremony to begin approximately 35 minutes after hatch opening.
we're in a brief expected handover between our satellites, but we'll regain communications here shortly. And as a reminder, we are taking your Ask NASA questions throughout the broadcast today. So if you have one, send it our way using the hashtag AskNASA. Our next question comes from Carrie, who wants to know, do they get to watch any TV shows or movies on their downtime aboard the space station? This is a great question, Carrie. And yes, indeed, the crew members do get to watch TV and movies. They can be sent up from teams on the ground. In fact, last night, NASA astronaut Mark Vanda High stayed up a little bit past his bedtime so that he could watch his crewmates launch to the space station. So if you watched our broadcast last night, you were watching it alongside an astronaut. Now those crew members have successfully arrived to the International Space Station and we're looking forward to hatch open in less than an hour from now. And Dragon, no response required, but cameras are internal. Endurance copies. Again, with that call, we may be getting some internal views inside Endurance here shortly. The crew has doffed or taken off their spacesuits as they are no longer needed for this portion since they've arrived to the International Space Station. for tracking purposes and endurance. We're on uh, through, partway through section five of six, sorry, 4.012 for the doffing. And then in 4.400, we're working on section three now. And copy that endurance. I have you the same as waiting. I see about 18 minutes left on my suit drying timer. And then you guys are working through section three. Thanks for the status update.
to confirm for uh, 3.2, you want to take out all the bottles and everything like that, consolidate everything. Uh, but when it talks about the packing plan, then 3.1, you're still talking about the asset plan, right? Affirmative, that is the ascent packing plan on your tablets. On board the International Space Station, NASA astronaut Mark Vandehei continues to work through procedures in anticipation of hatch opening. He's configuring cargo bags in order to be able to open that hatch here shortly. If you're just joining us this evening, the Crew-3 astronauts have successfully docked to the International Space Station after launching at 8.03 p.m. Central Time yesterday from Launch Pad 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The crew of Raja Chari, Kayla Barron, Tom Marshburn, and European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Maurer docked to the orbital outpost at 5.32 p.m. Central Time this evening. Inside the International Space Station, NASA. One, the APAS hatch is open and there was no condensate uh, seen. There we copy, hatch open, no condensation, thanks. Great news now that the APAS hatch is open, we're one step closer to welcoming the crew on board the International Space Station. NASA astronaut Mark Vandehei should now be able to see his new crewmates aboard the SpaceX Endurance vehicle. And you can see their spacesuits in that drying configuration there. Towards the middle of your screen is NASA astronaut and commander of Endurance, Rajachari. First time space flight for him. And to the right of your screen is European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Maurer.
Along with their crewmates, Kayla Barron and Tom Marshburn, they're continuing to step through procedures ahead of hatch opening. And we are in a brief expected handover period between our satellites, but we'll regain video and communications here shortly. As those preparations on both sides continue, the Crew 3 astronauts are getting things configured on their end and will join the three-person crew on board station. That's NASA astronaut Mark Van de Heij, as well as Roscosmos cosmonauts Piotr Dubrov and Anton Shkaplerov, the current space station commander. And that will bring the total crew members on station to seven. Upon hatch opening, we'll see some hugs and shared com camaraderie, and then we'll all be really looking forward to seeing the welcome ceremony, which is slated to begin approximately 35 minutes after hatch opening. Still tracking a hatch opening shortly after 7 p.m. Central Time this evening. It looks like NASA astronaut Mark Van de Heij is getting cargo bags ready, possibly working to get some of that padding configured for the hatch opening. Tom check. And endurance, I have you, f I would say about four by five. How me? I have you loud and clear. I have some inventory notes for you when you're ready to copy. And I am ready to copy, Kayla. Uh, we worked on replenishing the daily bag. Uh, we took one bag of disinfectant wipes from bag 107 and moved it to bag 110. We also took one large outer bag pack from bag 108 and moved it to 110. Okay, the disinfectant wipe from 107 to 110 and then the bag from 108 to 110. A good copy, Mike. Those words between the ground and NASA astronaut Kayla Barron as they work to make sure everything is configured properly before hatch opening. And on your screen now to the left lower portion of your screen is Roscosmos cosmonaut Anton, Anton Shkaplerov, who is working to assist NASA astronaut Mark Van de Heij in some procedures as they prepare for hatch opening here shortly.
as we continue to move towards a hatch opening shortly after 7 p.m., let's look at some of the milestones that NASA astronaut Mark Vandehei has already worked through in preparation for hatch opening. Mark Vandehei completed thermal equalization on the vestibule between Dragon and Station. Following this, the pressure was brought up to about five pounds per square inch where a leak check was performed. Everything checked out smoothly with that leak check, so the pressure was brought up and equalized to that of the pressure inside the space station. With pressure equalized and after checks, Vanda High was given the go to open the station side hatch, the A-pass hatch. Now that that's open, he should be able to see the crew inside Endurance. There's a small window on the Dragon where he can see them from. His main job now is to be configuring the station side hatch, which is currently configured with a docking target. It's a small rod with an X on the end that provided guidance for the Dragon during its approach to dock to the space station. He'll remove that and provide some padding to allow for safe entry for the Crew-3 astronauts to the International Space Station. As NASA astronaut Mark Vandehei continues to configure the hatch for hatch opening, we'll likely see him taking some photographs. Part of that is a procedure to survey the hatch itself and inspect for any foreign object debris. And Matthias, I am uh, ready for inventory. Yes, so we have an update on location 11 and location 12. In location 11, in bag 301, we have two primary ascent lunches, two utensils, and a bag of Huggies. Bag 302 is empty. Location 12. Bags 309, both empty. Bag 310, two ascent primary lunch, two breakfast, and two utensils. Copy. Okay, Matthias, I copied that bag 301 has two lunches, two utensils, and a bag of Huggies. Bag 302 is empty. Bag 309 and 311 are empty. And in bag 310, you have two lunches, two breakfasts, and two utensils. I'll copy. Perfect read back. Thank you. If you're 9 and 10 after when, when we started the suits. No worries. I know that space can get a little bit crowded with the suits in there.
As a reminder, we continue to take your Ask NASA questions and we'll answer them live on air. If you have a question for us, send it our way using the hashtag AskNASA. We got a great question asking if you can see the International Space Station when you look up. You can in fact see the International Space Station when you look up. If you check out the website spotthestation.nasa.gov, you can enter in your location and see when the International Space Station is flying over you. It's pretty neat to see it fly overhead and I recommend checking it out if you haven't done so already. Dragon. We're showing an hour on our suit timer, so we're starting to get the bags out and work on stowing the suits in the storage bags. And copy that, Dragon. I'm with you in 5 Alpha 6 of 4.012. Again, if you're just now joining us, you're watching the live broadcast of the Crew-3 mission, which launched yesterday at 8.03 p.m. Central Time from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida and docked just a couple hours ago at 5.32 p.m. Central Time. Now we're just waiting for the hatch to open up between the Endurance spacecraft and the International Space Station for the crew to ingress or come aboard. Following that, we'll have a welcoming ceremony about 35 minutes after hatch opening. Still tracking hatch opening shortly after 7 p.m. Central Time this evening. Houston and Endurance on the big loop. The station is ready for Dragon Hatch equalization. Houston copies. Endurance station on the big loop, did you copy? Yeah, 
on the big loop of dirt. Copies, we're ready. And uh, station and endurance, stand by for equalization. We expect it to take about three minutes. And the equalization process has started. Station, maybe a, a little more detail on that timing. So we're reconfiguring some caution warning. That's going to take about five minutes. Then we'll start the equalization, and that will take three. So we're about eight minutes away still. Station copies. And those words stating that it will take about eight minutes for that equalization process. Preparations continue to go smoothly on both the Endurance side as well as the International Space Station side for hatch opening coming up here shortly. Once the hatch is open, the crew members inside Endurance won't immediately ingress or come aboard the space station. They'll have to work through a couple more procedures first. SpaceX Endurance on uh, Dragon to ground. We're complete with 6.0. Correction, 4.012. Suit offing. Suit fans are off. And copy that, Russia. We see the same. For water bottles, we haven't uh, opened any new bags other than the ones we reported before. We're just currently consolidating the empties to take in the trash with us. And copy that, no deltas to the previous report for water consumption.
and SpaceX Endurance. Can you go external with the cameras for about, uh, well, just tell me, let you know where it's going to make sure the way system's ready before we shut it down? And copy that Endurance. We're with you in Section 5. We'll let you know when the cameras are external. Cameras are external. If you're just joining us this evening, the Crew-3 astronauts have successfully docked to the International Space Station after launching at 8.03 p.m. Central Time from Launch Pad 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The crew of Rajachari, Kayla Barron, Tom Marshburn, and European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Maurer successfully docked to the International Space Station at 5.32 p.m. Central Time this evening. At this hour, we are awaiting the hatch to open so that those four crew members can join the other three crew members currently on board the International Space Station, which includes NASA astronaut Mark Van de Hei and Roscosmos cosmonaut, cosmonauts Piotr Dubrov and Anton Shkaplerov, who is the current space station commander. About 35 minutes after hatch opening, we'll have a welcome ceremony where all seven of the Expedition 66 crewmates will be able to hug and welcome their new crewmates aboard. Additionally, we'll hear some comments and welcome wishes from leaders from each of the space agencies.
as a reminder, we are taking your Ask NASA questions all throughout the broadcast this evening. If you have a question for us, send it our way using the hashtag AskNASA. We've received a question asking, what are the objectives for the Dragon crew during the next six months? Well, this is a very good question. And over the last 21 years, crews aboard the space station have completed over 3,000 scientific and educational experiments. And Crew 3 is prepared to add to that growing number. Once Crew 3 arrives to the space station, they'll spend the next six months working in our orbital laboratory and having more crew members on board significantly expands the amount of research that can be conducted. Not only will the crew be contributing to hundreds of experiments, they'll also be bringing some with them on the Crew Dragon, which is now successfully docked to the International Space Station. One of those is the food physiology investigation, which documents if the effects of dietary improvements will also improve immune function and the gut microbiome, and if those improvements can help crews better adapt to spaceflight. An enhanced understanding of food's effects on physiology in microgravity can help scientists continue to improve the spaceflight diet and crew health. Additionally, in addition to hardware to support new science on board station, Crew Dragon is carrying more than 400 pounds of NASA cargo. This includes crew supplies, spacewalking equipment, and equipment for additional scientific investigations. SpaceX Endurance on the big loop. How do you hear it? We weren't getting a response on Dragon Ground. And that is expected as we are just getting through some of the steps to deactivate S band, but we have you loud and clear on the big loop. You're welcome to come back internal and just let us know when you're ready for uh, Dragon to Ground. We can give you the rest of the water inventory. Another experiment flying aboard Crew-3 is the Smartphone Video Guidance System, or SVGS. This was created as a co collaboration between NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, and the Florida Institute of Technology in Melbourne. SVGS is a low-cost, commercial, off-the-shelf implementation. And Dragon, this is SpaceX on the big loop. The S-band has been uh, deconfigured on Dragon, so we can continue our calls here on the big loop for the inventory. Uh, I'm with you with uh, Section 3 of 4.400, and that Section 5 has been completed in parallel. Again, SVGS is a low-cost, commercial, off-the-shelf implementation of advanced sensors designed for automated rendezvous and capture of spacecraft. SpaceX Endurance for location 10, bags 206 and 207 are completely empty. We're complete with 5.1 of 4.400, and we're working on location 9 water inventory currently. Copy, 206 and 207 empty. Uh, through in the uh, all the steps in 4.400 and then working through the inventory in 9 and 10. To learn more about these and thousands of research projects that have taken place aboard the space station, go to nasa.gov slash ISS science.
on the big loop for endurance for uh, SpaceX out of location 9, bags 202 and 203 are completely empty. And copy that, Raja, 202 and 203 are empty. Endurance. With that, we will uh, button up the panels here and we show ourselves uh, ready then for section six of 4400. And Endurance, this is SpaceX on the Big Loop. You can follow along with us in step 6.2 of 4.400 as we configure Dragon to hatch open prep. We were flying along on section 6.4.400. Preparations continue. Preparations continue in anticipation of upcoming hatch opening. Endurance, SpaceX on the big loop, you have a go for hatch opening per the decal, followed by the remaining actions in procedure 4.400, section 6. Uh, big loop, Endurance copies go for hatch opening, and then the remainder of section 6, 4.400. Good read back. We're monitoring here on the ground. And great news with that go for hatch opening. We should be seeing the crew float aboard the International Space Station here shortly. They're working to open up the hatch on the endurance side. Endurance, the hatch is open. 
Copy. We see the same. Dragon hatch is now open. And we can start to see the crew members inside endurance. That hatch that we've been waiting for to open since 5.32 p.m. Central Time is now open. Hatch opening taking place just a couple of seconds ago. The hatch is open, but the crew three astronauts will need to work through a few more steps before they can ingress the International Space Station. Complete with four out four hundred on the big loop, uh, ready for hatch cross if you are. That hatch opening occurring at 7.25 p.m. Central. And Endurance, this is SpaceX on the Big Loop. You uh, are go for hatch crossing. And first through the hatch is going to be NASA astronaut Kayla Barron. Some hugs there. And you can hear the claps inside Mission Control. Next up is European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Maurer. And now we have NASA astronaut Tom Marshburn. and NASA astronaut Raja Chari. Lots of hugs and smiles here. Seven crew members now a part of Expedition 66. And you can really see and feel the excitement by the looks on the crew's faces. Looks like they're posing for some photos now. Welcome to Station Crew 3. You guys look great in that photo. And if you're just now joining us, the Crew-3 astronauts have successfully docked and entered aboard the International Space Station. They launched yesterday at 8.03 p.m. Central Time and completed a 22-hour launch to docking to the International Space Station. Docking occurred this evening at 5.32 p.m. Central Time and the hatch was opened just a few minutes ago at 7.25 p.m. Central Time. NASA astronaut Raja Chari, Kayla Barron, and Tom Marshburn, as well as European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Maurer, have now successfully reached the International Space Station, and we see a pretty special moment happening right now for Kayla Barron, first time space flyer, as she's being pinned as an official flown NASA astronaut.
Next up is European Space Agency astronaut Tom Marshburn, also a first-time flyer. Excuse me, that is NASA, that is European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Maurer being pinned by NASA astronaut Tom Marshburn. Lots of smiles and thumbs up, an exciting moment. And the third first time space flyer, commander of the SpaceX Endurance Vehicle, Rajachari, getting his pin. Houston Station on two, checking for the timing of the PAO event. Just about to hand over, Mark. I'll catch you on the other side. And we're in a brief expected handover between our satellites, but we'll regain communications here shortly. Crew 3 has successfully arrived to the International Space Station after docking at 5.32 p.m. Central Time and floated inside the space station at 7.25 p.m. Central. Station Houston on two, other side of that handover. Looks like we're going to target top of the hour for the PAO event. Top of the hour and for Mark, uh, we'll go for the scene and voice check at your convenience whenever it works. Okay, I'll call you back. I'll copy uh, PAO event in about 26 minutes and I'll do the scene and voice check shortly. Copy that. And endurance crew, com check with uh, core here on uh, Space to Ground 2. And SpaceX endurance has you loud and clear on 2. Hey, Raja, I just want to say that uh, everyone here was clapping pretty hard as soon as we saw everybody cross the threshold there. A lot of smiles on our faces. But we do have a few more steps in Procedure 2.102 if you're <laughs> able to do that. <laughs> Jump back into Section 6. Our, our main one is going to be uh, sealing up that Lyo cube in uh, Section um, uh, uh, in that 2.102. Yeah, two dot. Uh, we'll jump into section six and get working on the Lyle. And just for awareness, we're just looking to get that one done before the PAO event, before we hop back in at the top of the hour.
We're now targeting a welcome ceremony to begin at 8 p.m. Central Time this evening. If you're just joining us this evening, the Crew-3 astronauts have not only successfully docked to the International Space Station after launching at 8.03 p.m. Central Time yesterday from Launch Pad 39A at, NAS at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida, but they've also floated through... Installation complete. Go for IMV fan activation. Houston copies. Thanks, Caleb. Crew 3 successfully floated through the space station hatch at 7.25 p.m. Central Time. Following a dock at 5.32 p.m. Central Time. At this time, we're waiting on a welcoming ceremony to begin at 8 p.m. Central Time. The crew on board the International Space Station is going to complete a scene and voice check to make sure everything checks out on the ground before the welcoming ceremony takes place. And Houston Endurance is waiting on your go to open location 23. We copy, stand by one. Station, I'm ready for the scene and voice checks. Copy, Mark. We're ready for the voice and uh, for the scene. It looks like we're going to zoom out just a little bit, please. Zoom out a touch so we can get seven folks in there. And Endurance, this is Houston on the big loop. Uh, Raja, your go for uh, 6.1. Go to open location 23. Not a big loop. 
big loop. We copy it. We're going to open location 23 and then burst. Hey, affirmative 6.3. And then Houston for Mark, uh, we're back with you and ready for the voice checks. Uh, this is the voice check. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And station for Mark, uh, good scene, good voice. We're all set, ready to go, and uh, we'll kick it off at the top of the hour. Copy, thumbs up. And we had a successful scene and voice check. We're still targeting the welcoming ceremony to begin at 8 p.m. Central Time this evening. On your screen, you can see in the bottom right is NASA astronaut Mark Vandehei. He did a lot of preparations ahead of hatch opening. To the left of him is Roscosmos cosmonaut Piotr Dubrov, as well as European Space Agency astronaut and member of Crew 3, who just arrived to the International Space Station, Tom Marshburn. This is excuse me, Matthias Maurer, this is his first time in space. And to the right of him is the current space station commander, Roscosmos cosmonaut Anton Shkaplerov. Copy all. Houston Station on two concerning uh, T2 harnesses. Go ahead on two. Okay, I put the uh, harnesses for the crew three folks next to T2 this morning, except I did not find the harness for Marshburn. Is there, can you tell me where to find that? And we're checking on that now. Not sure we're gonna have an answer ASAP, but we're asking the question. We got plenty of time, just gotta have it before his first T2 session. Yep, thanks. We're now just 15 minutes away from a welcoming ceremony. On your screen, you see veteran ast astronaut Tom Marshburn floating back through the hatch from the endurance vehicle, which docked to the International Space Station at 5.30 p.m. Central Time this evening. And there's a view of it docked to the International Space Station.
The crew on board is working on some final procedures to get everything squared away before the welcoming ceremony begins at 8 p.m. Central Time this evening. We're about 12 minutes out from our welcome ceremony to begin. If you do have any more Ask NASCA questions, be sure to send them our way and we'll answer them before the welcoming ceremony begins. And if you are just joining us, the Crew-3 astronauts have successfully docked the International Space Station after launching at 8.03 p.m. Central Time yesterday from Launch Pad 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The crew of Raj Achari, Kayla Barron, Tom Marshburn, and European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Maurer docked to the orbital outpost at 5.32 p.m. Central Time this evening. And following docking, they floated aboard at 7.25 p.m. Central Time, officially welcoming them as members of the Expedition 66 crew. There's now seven human beings living and working aboard the International Space Station, including the four Crew-3 astronauts, as well as NASA astronaut Mark Vandehei and Roscosmos cosmonauts Piotr Dubrov and Anton Shkaplerov, who is the current Space Station commander.
And as a reminder, we are taking your Ask NASA question. So if you have one, send it our way. We're just a few minutes away from the hatch the welcoming ceremony to begin at 8 p.m. Central Time. But we did get a question about the zero G indicator for endurance, asking what the name of the zero G indicator was and what the zero G indicator was. It's become a tradition for Crew Dragon vehicles and the crew members to select a zero G indicator. For this vehicle, the Crew 3 astronauts selected a turtle as their zero G indicator, which they named FAU, which is German for peacock. That pays tribute to European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Maurer, who is from Germany, as well as pays tribute to the turtle class. Thank you for Mark at your convenience. I have an answer on that harness. Go ahead on two. I'll get you in uh, five seconds, 10 sec, 20 seconds on the other side of the handover. And while there's a brief handover that pays tribute to the turtle class, each astronaut class has a nickname from the class above them. This class has several turtles flying on board the space station. So the zero G indicator is a turtle named Pfau, which is the German word for peacock. And Station Houston on to uh, Mark, we found an answer. His harness flew up on Crew 3. It's in Dragon. It's going to be unpacked on Saturday. Um, but if you need it before that, you could grab it. It's uh, step five in the unta unpack message of Stotrack. Okay, thanks much. And we're just about five minutes away from our welcoming ceremony where we'll hear some remarks from NASA leadership as well as the leadership from the European Space Agency. Still tracking a start time for the welcoming ceremony at 8 p.m. Central Time this evening. Station Houston on two, no reply needed, but we're four minutes, four minutes out from the PAO event.
great shot of the crew four astronauts there as they prepare for the welcoming ceremony slated to begin just about a minute from now. From left to right of your crew three astronauts are NASA astronaut Tom Marshburn, NASA astronaut Kayla Barron, NASA astronaut Raja Chari, and European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Maurer. Floating into the frame now is NASA astronaut Mark Vandehei. Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? We are not quite ready for the event. We've got to get the space station commander. No problem. Standing by. Houston, this is Station. We are ready for the event. We copy, Station. Associate Administrator Kathy Leaders, please call the International Space Station for a voice check. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. We can definitely hear you. Greetings. Greetings. Are you ready to go? Let's do it. I'm not sure if we're supposed to start talking first or if you're going to talk first. Okay. I'll get started and then you guys can follow. Okay. Hey, you know, tonight, tonight's docking was a perfect way for us to finish up what has been our 10-year anniversary year for the, for the commercial crew program. And uh, I don't know about you guys, but it feels like the last two weeks have been pretty crazy for me. And uh, I know you guys are probably real happy to be out of crew quarters. I told uh, Norm Knight last night we were rescuing him from crew quarters with this launch. And uh, I know you guys, I know Mark, you were waiting patiently for them to come, um, enjoying a few days of a little bit of quiet before the next round of folks coming up. Um, but boy, is it good to see you. Uh, so, Raja, I, I'm hearing, you know, you're here leading the turtles, and, uh, and, and you have the turtle there. And as you know, I'm so happy to, in, in particular, to see you there after all your work doing the joint test team. So after you come back, it'll be good to hear how the vehicle operated for you with all the work that you did. And it's so fantastic to see Matthias, Kayla, and Tom there with you safely. So we can't wait to see all the work you all are going to accomplish. And I'm looking forward to many, many more amazing experiences to come over the next six months while you all are there. Thank you again for your service. I loved, Roger, what you said yesterday when you're, we're getting ready for launch. And you said, you know, we we're hoping for a Halloween launch, but it's even cooler right now to be able to launch and dock on Veterans Day. And it is a great way for us to honor our veterans. Thank you.
Thanks, Kathy, and uh, thanks to all the SpaceX and NASA teams. As you mentioned, uh, it, uh, it was great to get to work on the vehicle, and I think we all loved the ride up there. Uh, it was way smoother than we could have imagined, and uh, that feeling going from Miko to the second stage was just awesome uh, and a beautiful ride. Uh, it was neat to see and feel the engines respond and then see it in the displays. And as you mentioned, uh, we worked tests before, and it wouldn't have been complete without testing out the system uh, and seeing if we could go from landing to launch in under 48 hours. So kudos to the entire team that pulled that off. Um, we drove Norm crazy in crew quarters, but uh, we had a pretty, uh, we got all gates of weight there too, but we're, <laughs> we're happy to be here now and ready to work. Uh, hi, colleagues. Uh, I'm very proud to be commander of this great team. We are start to fly together, and I know in the future we'll have the beautiful days on orbit together. We'll work together and relax together. And, and I can't tell you how happy I am to see these smiling faces. Every one of us, all seven of us, are, are friends, and we're going to become even better friends as time goes on. And we've got a lot of work to do to do all the science experiments. Uh, I learned over over the course of last week that at this moment we've got 60 in, 60 experiments in progress already. And of course, by the time we finish our time up here, we'll have participated in many more experiments than that. Um, we've got a lot of work to do. A lot of exciting times coming up, and. Uh, it's really an honor to be up here at the time when these folks arrived and uh, to be able to help out, not just with doing science that's going to help out with f human humanity on the Earth right now, but also to help the human race be better to able to explore further and further away from our home planet. Thank you, Mrs. Leaders. We now welcome ESA Director General Joseph Oshbacher. Please call station for a voice check. Uh, station, this is Joseph Oshbacher. How do you hear me? Hello, Joseph. Here's Matthias. I hear you five by five. Five by five. Fantastic. Uh, really happy uh, to see you, Matthias. Uh, happy to see all of you. And, and uh, it is. Uh, just uh, amazing to see these smiling faces. Uh, I think, uh, Matthias, it must be a great feeling experiencing uh, weightlessness uh, life and uh, for the first time uh, for you. And uh, I think this is just uh, it's just fantastic. I have to say that uh, for ESA and for Europe, it is uh, it's fascinating to have you as our next representative at the space station. While Toma, as you know, has just returned uh, to your common uh, home base, the European Astronaut Center in Cologne and uh, both to recover for him, but also to engage in uh, post-mission uh, scientific activities, uh, the science that you will continue uh, in the next coming uh, six months. Uh, Matthias, I can only tell you that we all at ESA, we are so proud of, uh, of you and are very excited to see you at the space station. Of course, we wish you all the best of luck. Uh, I know you have a, a lot of science and a lot of experiments uh, ahead of you, EVAs, including work on the European robotic arm. Uh, we look forward to seeing you working in the NASA and the Russian spacesuits. Uh, but also, I hope that you you have some time uh, to enjoy the stunning views of uh, our beautiful planet Earth from the cupola. And your messages uh, to planet Earth, uh, to all of us down here, will certainly be exciting and helping us all to, to preserve it. And uh, it's just, uh, just beautiful. So really, from my side, uh, Matthias, a very, very warm welcome uh, uh, to all of you, also to Raja, to Tom, uh, Kayla, uh, on behalf of, uh, of the European Space Agency. And I'm just so excited and so happy to see you up there, smiling and in very good shape. Many thanks, Joseph. Many thanks to all the ESA colleagues uh, who helped me to find the way up here to, into space. It was a very interesting ride, exciting yesterday on the the Falcon 9 in the Crew Dragon 
And uh, just minutes before we started this PRO event, uh, my colleagues here actually uh, gave me the honor in opening the cupola uh, shutters and just that's an amazing view. It's the view that I was dreaming about for years and um, I, after this event I will go back and just in, indulge more in this view. So yes, you said right, we have a lot of science experiments ahead and uh, I'm very happy to continue what Thomas started. And uh, then after six months, I will hand over to Samantha and it will be the time of longest European presence in space, one and a half years, almost without interruption, if Thomas hadn't left early. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, we strive to, uh, to provide all the science um, experiments that all the scientists on the ground are hoping for. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Matthias. And, uh, and really a, a very warm greetings from all of us here. So, Dankeschön. And, uh, auch Auf Deutsch noch ein paar Grüße, weil es einfach so schön ist, dich uh, in guter Form zu sehen und uh, alles Gute. Ja. Ganz herzlichen Dank und ganz, ganz liebe Grüße natürlich auch an alle in Deutschland, in Europa, die das hier möglich gemacht haben. Natürlich auch besonders meine Freunde und Familie. Danke. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you, Associate Administrator Leaders and Director General Ashbacher for your participation in the Crew 3 welcome ceremony. Station, we are now resuming normal operational audio communications. Wow, what an incredible few hours it has been. It is so great to see the Crew 3 astronauts on board. They were just welcomed by leaders from each of the space, space agencies that represent the crew members of Endurance. First, we heard from Kathy Leaders, the Associate Administrator of Space Operations Mission Director at NASA. And then we heard some remarks from Joseph Oshbacher, the European Space Agency Director General. Each of them talked about what it took us to get to this moment to welcome four new astronauts to the International National Space Station, bringing the current population of the space station to seven human beings as part of the Expedition 66 mission. It's been an incredible 24 hours for Crew 3, and we are thrilled to see them safely on board the International Space Station. We've been with you from the very beginning, starting with the crew suiting up in the suit up room at the ONC building. The crew then headed to the launch pad and made their way up the service fixed structure and ingressed the Crew Dragon Endurance. We had an on time lift off yesterday at 8.03 p.m. Central Time. Following liftoff, the first stage separated and came back to Earth, landing on the recovery ship while Dragon separated from the second stage. We had a good nose cone deploy and five major burns took place as Dragon made its way to the space station. Finally, Endurance and its four-person crew docked to the International Space Station at 5.32 p.m. Central Time, and the crew members floated through the hatch at 7.25 p.m. Central Time officially bringing them to their new home for the next six, six months in space. It's been an incredible 24 hours watching this mission, and on behalf of SpaceX and NASA, thank you for watching it all unfold with us. The third rotational crew mission has reached the International Space Station and will spend approximately six months docked the space station until it's time for the crew to return home. Now that Crew 3 has successfully arrived at the International Space Station, be sure to follow NASA and SpaceX on social media for real-time updates throughout their mission. Thanks again for watching our coverage. Go NASA, go SpaceX, and go Crew 3. This is Mission Control Houston.
Did you know that if you were born after 2000, during your entire life, there has been someone living in space? That's thanks.